Last video, I defined the orientations of curves and surfaces and how boundaries of surfaces match with orientations. This is now enough to state the major theorems of vector calculus. This is the goal of this whole section. These are the versions of the fundamental theorem of calculus that tell me how line integrals and flux integrals fit together. So remember the archetype. I have two integrals. On one side, I have a boundary, and on the other side, I have a derivative. All the results in this section fit this pattern. I'll start with Stokes' theorem. Let f be a vector field in R3, and sigma be any orientable surface. Then the integral of the field over the boundary of the surface is the same as the integral of the curl of the field over the whole surface. There's a boundary on the left, it's the boundary of the surface, and there's a derivative on the right, the curl of the field. I'll get into examples and applications in later videos, but let me remind you of the conditions. Making sure that conditions are satisfied is important. The only condition on the surface is that it is orientable, and here there are no conditions on the field. The second main result is Gauss's theorem. Again, let f be a vector field in R3, and here d is a solid region in R3, a three-dimensional area, like the inside of a sphere or a cube. The boundary of a three-dimensional region is a surface. The hollow sphere is the boundary of a solid sphere, the hollow cube as the boundary of a solid cube. The orientation by convention is always outward. The normal of the surface has to point out from the solid region. Then the theorem says that the integral of f over this boundary surface is the same as the integral of the divergence of f over the whole solid region. It's the same pattern as before a boundary on the left, and a derivative on the right. In this case, the boundary is the boundary of a solid region, and the derivative is the divergence of a vector field. The assumptions here are nothing on the field, but the surface needs to be the boundary of a region, it needs to be a closed surface. Gauss's and Stokes' theorem are the two main results here. There is a third called Green's theorem that is usually included. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, since Green theorem is actually just Stokes theorem, but just collapsed down from R3 to R2. If you set all the z coordinates to zero and only look at the xy plane, then the surface is just a region in R2, and its boundary is the counterclockwise path around it. Only one coordinate to the curl will remain, and that coordinate will be del f2 del x minus del f1 del y. I'm not going to do any examples or calculations with Green's theorem, and I won't ask you to do any either. However, since these results are typically called Gauss-Green-Stokes, I did need to mention here what Green's theorem is. And if you want to think of it, just think of it as Stokes, but in R2. Those are the results. Right now, I imagine that it's pretty opaque why all of this matters or how all of it works. And this is what I'm going to try to answer for the rest of the week, why this is important, and what I can do with these results, and why these results are really the key ideas of vector calculus.